The big question now, will the president's declaration jumpstart the peace process or is it broken beyond repair? For answers, I turn to former Senator George Mitchell, the administration's envoy to Israel and the Palestinians until just this past Friday. And this is the senator's first interview since he stepped down. Senator, a huge flap has arisen over the word 67 in the speech by President Obama. Was the president signifying a major shift in U.S. policy? No, he wasn't. It is a significant statement. The president said, the United States' commitment to Israel's security is unshakable. And it is. Our security cooperation is the best it's ever been. The president didn't say that Israel has to go back to the 67 lines. He said, with agreed swaps. Those are significant. Swaps means an exchange of land intended to accommodate major Israeli population centers to be incorporated into Israel and Israel's security needs. Agreed means, through negotiations, both parties must agree. There's not going to be a border unless Israel agrees to it, and we know they won't agree unless their security needs are satisfied, as it should be. The proposal was identical to a proposal made by the Israeli Prime Minister just prior to Mr. Netanyahu. Ehud Omer was a Prime Minister until 2009. So why the flap then? Why has Prime Minister Netanyahu and his supporters behaved as if this was a major change and really threatening Israel? I don't believe it is threatening Israel. And a major objective of this initiative, among others, is to prevent a disaster for Israel from occurring at the United Nations General Assembly in September, when the Palestinians have said they will seek a unilateral declaration of statehood. The president spoke out strongly against that. We oppose it. And the way to prevent that from occurring is to provide an alternative in direct negotiation that would foreclose or make not necessary that option. You've just handed in your resignation after just over two years as being the special envoy. Are you more optimistic or less optimistic than you were when you started this? Well, one has to have optimism to undertake this assignment. Uh, I when knew, one resigns, course, what I does knew, that mean? Well, it means just what I said when I resigned. When I met with the president initially, I said to him, Mr. President, I can't do a full four-year term. I said two years. And he said, that's fine. That's very nice and very diplomatic. On the other hand, many of your friends and, and allies and colleagues in this endeavor have said that George Mitchell is a decent and good and honest man, and he is faced with a process that is going nowhere. Well, it's indisputable that we have not made as much progress as we would have liked. Let's go back to the beginning of this administration's endeavors on this decades-long crisis. President Obama made it very clear that the end of Israeli settlements would be the condition for new talks. But he also wanted the Arab countries to make faith-building, trust-building maneuvers towards Israel. That didn't happen. The Arabs didn't step forward. Do you think, in retrospect, it was a mistake to insist that settlements remained the precondition for talks? It was not a precondition. The mistake was to not make that as clear as we could have. The president's position was that Israel should stop new settlement construction activity and at the same time that the Palestinians should agree to come into talks. They were not stated as preconditions, although unfortunately they were then adopted as preconditions. Certainly but the whole world took it as a precondition and then well, there was a new position by the United well, States. Well, as I said, we should have made that more clear but we never stated it. Why should anybody think that there is a way out of this? You know, what is the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again? Yeah, well, there's another definition of insanity, and that's to give up on a valid goal because you've gotten discouraged and you can't succeed. 